us live now is UCSF infectious disease specialist, Dr. Peter Chin Hong. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. My pleasure, Liz. Thanks for having me on. Let's start with the idea of vaccine mandates for students in school districts. Are these vaccine mandates really the best way to go for this age group in terms of keeping things open, keeping the schools open and keeping the kids healthy? Yes, undeniably. Uh, we are used to vaccine mandates in schools, as people know, um, to get in school myself. I to have measles, mumps, rubella, chicken pox, uh, you name it. So it's not a new situation. And uh, it has two results for COVID vaccines for these kids. Number one, it uh, would prevent them from getting COVID themselves, even with possibly a new, more infectious variant of the future. And number two, it will decrease the mayhem, the confusion, the chaos of one person being uh, positive and then everybody else having to go home to do remote learning. So I think for both of those reasons, I think it's a good idea. What about the questions some parents may have about how the vaccine impacts children? Are there more side effects for children versus adults? Do we know that yet? Uh, well, for adolescents, uh, we do have the data that Pfizer uh, submitted and Moderna is submitting that to the FDA. Uh, we do know that in the mRNA vaccines, there's a possibility of myocarditis and pericarditis. The average age is age 26 to 30. So, you know, some adolescents can certainly get it, but it's a little bit older. But most of them are generally reversible. Most people get better after this for the second week. And, um, you know, it, it's very rare, about 12 per million. And I know we're waiting for Pfizer to submit its findings on the kids younger than 12. Do you anticipate once the FDA approves the vaccine for that age group that there, we're going to see more mandates for the smaller kids? Yes, definitely. Um, again, it's part of the culture of schools. It's the part of the culture of vulnerable populations. Uh, just like in the healthcare field, uh, the school is no different in wanting to have a safe environment so parents feel comfortable and confident in sending their kids off. We're also following the developing news today about booster shots for those uh, 65 and older. What, what's your opinion on these booster shots? Do you think that they're a good idea and eventually do you think they're gonna hit the general public as well? Yes, definitely. Uh, we have had booster shots again in the history of vaccines. Mm -hmm. uh, MMR, measles, mumps, and rubella, hepatitis B, uh, human papillomavirus. You have a prime and boost strategy. The priming occurs number one and two within a month and then the boost occurs several months later. So it's not something new in infectious disease. So I anticipate that that will probably be the way it will go. Mm -hmm. But in terms of the data, the FDA is following the data right now and older people is really where the signal is and they're being proactive in those who are at risk of having complications. Sure. And now, after people that want the extra booster get it down the road, do you anticipate us all getting COVID vaccines along with our flu shots moving forward in the next couple of years or so? Yeah, so Moderna, for example, is already doing one stop shopping with putting a combination of flu and COVID in one platform. I think that's the way of the future mm -hmm. so that, um, you know, if there's a variant circulating, you can have that added to your flu vaccine. We're not really sure what the landscape of COVID will be in the next year or several years, but at least the technology is there to support any changes. Yeah, they're staying ahead of it. All right, Dr. Peter Chin Han, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks so much, Liz.